thank you. Um, how much exposure does the company have to the strengthening U.S. dollar? Um, and to what extent, if they do have debt in U.S. dollars, which you didn't mention one way or the other, how much would the dollar have to strengthen before that would also change your recommendation from buy to hold or sell? Uh, as far as the debt is concerned, the company has no foreign uh, borrowings. So all the borrowings are domestic and are INR denominated. So as far as debt is concerned, there is no exposure to uh, foreign uh, U.S. strengthening. Uh, if we look at the revenue projections, the entire revenue and the projects are uh, awarded by either the government of India or the state governments for several states of India. So again, when we come to revenue or the business creators generation, that it comes domestically. So the risk exposure to these projects is also minimal. Okay. You have mentioned about the average time overruns in one of your slides, and it has been about 10, 11 months. So what, are there any penalties for that, and how have they done over the years in terms of reducing the, uh, the average time overruns? Well, Ashoka Bilcon has one of the greatest reputation in building, completing the project on or before time. And it has built up its own research center, and is spending heavily on the R&D of the. Plus, if the Ashoka has to bid for any particular project, the whole, it has a dedicated team of 40 to 50 people which exclusively conducts the survey of all the roads and traffic movement over here. And so therefore, if any particular uh, due diligence has to be taken care, it has taken before the bidding process. So therefore, it has may help in maintaining the good track record in this. And it has completed many of these projects which are before time. Adding on, uh, as far as the penalties are concerned, the penalty are in a way that once you are given a 30, consider for example, there's a project which is given for 30 year window. You complete the project within two years, then you get a 28 months, 28 years window for toll collection. If you delay your completion, you will be affecting that 28 years window of toll collection and that will get reduced. That's how the penalty will come to you and the toll collection which will get delayed. So. Um, I'm just interested in your valuation methodology. At the beginning, you were, when, you're talking, when you're talking about strong financials, you're actually looking at the EBIT, sorry, the EBIT margins. But in your valuations, you're talking about the EBIT, um, at the, e, um, the EBIT. But uh, can you explain that move and why you're looking at two different things and, and how you saw it? EV by EBIT multiple for valuing EPC division in particular. So basically, we have peers where uh, we. We wanted to account for difference in capital structures. So that's why we have used EV by VETA multiple there, for valuing EPC division only. Okay, thank you. What are the major factors that you think contributed to the company enjoying um, premium over competitors? So uh, the two key factors are, firstly, the strong financial health. As we can see that most of the companies in this sector have already gone for corporate debt restructuring. So it is one of the few companies who is still there, who still has the capacity to take up on future projects which are awarded, whereas other companies are already into corporate debt restructuring. This has happened because the company has already incorporated debt discipline as part of its long-term strategic vision. So uh, they are at 2.4 debt to equity capital, and they're further in the what we came to know from investor uh, call that they're further trying to get reduce it to 2.1. So that is first factor. Second is the strong corporate governance of the company. So uh, if we see that most of the management who is actively involved in day-to-day -day operations have an experience of more than 30 to 35 years. So the, uh, bid, uh, whenever the bidding happens, the bidding window is just 45 days. So in case most of the companies, what they do is they start their research in those 45 days window only. Whereas this company has a 50 uh, people strong team which does primarily this around the year. So they know that they'll be taking up projects in this particular uh, uh, stretches of roads. So they do it one year in advance before the bidding has happened, which tells them recently they gave up one of the projects in Orissa because they did not think, the, they thought that the land acquisition right will not be able to acquire. So that's how uh, planning and good financials and the corporate governance helps them trade at the premium from the peers. Are there any positive catalysts that you expect to come out into the market in the near term that might positively impact the stock price? 
first of all uh, uh, this particular uh, this particular infrastructure sector is highly dependent on the government government activities currently land acquisition bill is in the house and that will majorly impact this entire sector if land acquisition bill is passed mo the most critical factor factor of this sector that is because that is the main reason of delay will get minimized and this will boost the entire in infrastructure sector so land acquisition bill and second is uh, rbi is pushing uh, the monetary policy which will provide more capital in near future so just building on that uh, you mentioned that government delay is a, has a very high probability of occurring um, and has a high impact how have they actually mitigated that as as mentioned uh, most of these are external factors but this uh, ashoka bilcon is actively participative in land acquisition uh, as well this particular company is very focused in their geographic area they have good reputation they have social connect with these areas so land acquisition is government's responsibility majorly but as a proactive step this particular firm takes up land acquisition uh, beforehand as an investor uh, how how do i immune myself from the risk that uh, the company is going not going to uh, issue more capital and dilute my shareholding without giving me any preemptive rights if there is any cash uh, any, any right issue uh, which if, if there is cash call by the company then how how do i ensure that uh, i am not immune to that risk as an investor uh, in a couple of months back only the company has increased its authorized capital so uh, they have maybe more than 50% they have added to the authorized capital so which is a signal that going ahead there will definitely be a further rights issue so which will ensure that the uh, as an investor the stakeholding position which is there can be maintained in future so that is a signal to uh, the value which investor has will not be diluted in the future You mentioned power uh, transmission and distribution. Uh, are they involved in that business, and, and how are they involved in that business? So this is the new business in which the Ashoka has gone into because uh, it is a very lucrative business. Because right now, it is into the transmission and distribution up to 66 kV uh, line, is basically rural activity. So what happens is that it allows the because the completion time of power TND project is less than a, a construction of a road, so revenue recognition is earlier. So they can complete the project in two years' time and realize that gain. And secondly, it is a very strong focus from the government because the current competition in this sector is very less comp as compared to the road project. And in the South India, where it is majorly dominant in the power sector, it is one of the largest players in the rural electrification area. Just to follow up, what kind of margins do they make from the power business as opposed to the roads? Yeah, so the, in the, the beta margin in the power sector is around 12 to 13 percent, and as for in the road EPC, it is around 13 to 14 percent. Overall, the company has a beta margin of 23 percent. So, beta margins are lower currently for power compared to roads because it is currently into lower margins, a lower KVA lines because it's a small player, but it's growing in terms of uh, doing taking up projects in JVs with the other players. So uh, in, initially, the margins are lower. Uh, because of the lower uh, capacity lines they are uh, taking because they do not have the expertise as of now. But eventually they build up the uh, beta margins uh, enjoyed by the peers who are totally developed into sectors are more than what they enjoy in the road sectors currently. And, and how much control do they have over timing? I'm sorry, how much control do they have over their setting of prices for tolls? I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? How much control do they have over setting prices for tolls and things like that? Uh, all these, all the projects that ABL has under its belt, the, the BOT projects, these projects have revised uh, tariffs uh, correlated to the WPI every three years. So, depending on uh, depending on the WPI at that particular time, the the tariff rates are revised. Majorly, it is government regulated pricing, but government has given these uh, basic uh, window of WPI so that you can revise your rate according to the current inflation. Adding to the point, uh, they have won two projects in South India 
where the projects are on annuity basis. So it it uh, helps 